So we saw yesterday how to find critical points. How do we find our critical points? Yep, take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and then figure out what x values make it zero. And then classifying them, so find, so finding them, you're gonna set f prime x equal to zero to classify So if you know your critical point looks like c comma f of c, you're going to have more than one critical point. Uh, you're going to classify by checking f double prime of c. And if that is greater than zero, you have a smile. If less than zero, you have a frown. Equal zero, uh, it could be one of, no, that's not great, but it's an inflection, so not max or min. What's that? Set it equal to zero after you do take the derivative? Nope. You set the first, you set the derivative equal to zero. Find all x values that solve that. Right. And then write them as points. All right, so take the derivative, set it equal to zero. I chose the easy polynomial. Not hard to take derivative, set it equal to zero. So do that right now. You should have more than one solution for that. What's that? Uh, You're talking about plugging back into the F's here? Oh, yeah. Negative four thirds. You have to figure out the original y value.
any questions getting the initial x values? Just set that derivative to equal to zero. Don't forget about your negative two solution. So I took the, the plus or minus two, and then I need to get the y value. So you take two and f it, and that's a little bit tricky, but you should get negative four thirds. And then I found the y value at negative two, which was 28 thirds. Classifying, I put, make sure you put the x value into f double prime. Don't put the y value in. That won't make any sense. So the second derivative was positive, greater than zero. So that means your function is happy. So concave up, happy function. Negative two, plug that in. It was two times negative two, negative four, less than zero, frowny face. So that's not, classifying them is not drawing a little picture. It's writing down, is it a local max or a local min? So let's do the first one first. Happy face. Is the point at the bottom a local maximum or a local minimum? Local minimum. So I'm going to write local minimum. That's a little weird. Your second derivative was positive, but that means local minimum, not local maximum. So make sure you draw your concave up, and when you draw concave up, it should be really obvious you have a minimum, not a maximum. So just think, smile or frown. I know that's stupid, but it works. So the other one was concave down, which looking at the picture is local maximum. Whoa. So we have local min and local max. Now this function is continuous, it's polynomial. So if I drew it, I would draw it with the one single curve. There's no vertical asymptote to cross over. And in this case, you will see the local minimum had a smaller y value than local maximum. That will not always be the case. So this one has smaller local minimum than local maximum. I'll draw you a weird function that will not have that property. So this is absolutely not the same function we're working on. So this function has one local min and one local max. Oh, that's not a good example. Here we go. Our local minimum is higher up than our local maximum. So if your function is not continuous, there's vertical asymptote here, your local minimum or maximum may not necessarily be higher or lower than the other ones. So don't expect your local maximums to be the biggest point uh, in the entire function. So we're going to get into graphing now. So I'm going to write the procedure for graphing, and then we'll talk about how to get the parts we haven't seen already. So the procedure for graphing is going to start out pretty much exactly with uh, the same steps that we just wrote down. So this is, we will jump into 4, 3 now. No. 4, 4. Concavity and curve sketching. Uh, whatever it says on top of the page. Four, four. Four, four. Uh, four, one through four, two. Yeah, we'll come back to it. So the story I want to tell goes in this order. Four, three is the mean value theorem. Wait, whatever it says here. 4, 2 is the mean value theorem. So I'll come back and do that. We're basically focusing on graph properties right now. I'll come back and do the mean value theorem. All right, so we saw concavity. What's it? 
Yeah. That said mean right there. So we saw concavity. I don't need to go back and talk about concavity. So we saw that before. Uh, what I am going to write is the procedure for, and they call it curve sketching, but this is graphing. So they're calling it curve sketching because we're actually going to sketch the concavity and the slope, the way the curves actually turn. So we're going to focus a lot more on the way the curves are actually drawn, or how much curviness or turniness the curves have. So we're actually going to focus on the curve part of it this time. So we're just going to write that procedure for graphing. So the bad news is there is eight steps. The good news is I will write down all eight steps for you because I want to know your results for every single step. So number one, so for graphing our function, so we're going to find domain of f. You don't have to look for symmetry, but you could save a little time sometimes if you look for even or odd symmetry. But you definitely need a domain of f. Generally, when you find the domain of f, that's going to tell you vertical asymptotes as well. If we're going to be divided by zero, that's also your vertical asymptotes. Um, is there a step for vertical asymptotes? Oh, uh, what's that? So vertical asymptotes, which you're going to generally see in the domain step, and end behavior. So that was, I think, the last question on the midterm was this part of the graphing. So vertical asymptotes, end behavior. Uh, three, find the derivatives. Four, uh, find and classify critical points. Which we just did in the previous example. So we've done everything through four. So I will go through these steps again on the examples we do. But these are the four steps that you should know how to do by this point. So five, you're going to find the increasing and decreasing intervals. So increasing is f prime greater than 0 and decreasing f prime less than 0. And find uh, concave up intervals, concave down intervals. So that is f double prime greater than 0 and concave down intervals. F double prime less than zero. So step five and six are similar. You're just using the derivative of the derivative. Step seven, plot key points. So which points are key? All of your intercepts and all of your uh, local min and max, or really critical points. You're also going to plot your horizontal asymptot or vertical asymptotes. And your end behavior.
Uh, step eight, we're going to use the increasing, uh, decreasing intervals and concavity to sketch the graph. So we're going to sketch the graph. Using increasing, decreasing, and concavity. So we're going to know how the graph is. Uh, should it be going up to the right, down to the right, and then should it be increasing in a concave up way, or should it be increasing in a concave down way? So we're going to use all that information. So I will write out all eight steps on your quiz or final exam when it's time to graph. You're going to need to know how to do each step, but you don't need to remember what the steps are, just how to do them. So we're going to graph. We'll start out with an easier problem and then do a more difficult one. x to the fourth minus 4x four cubed plus 10. So I picked this function because it has nice derivatives and second derivatives. It doesn't have nice x-intercepts. So I'm telling you what the x-intercepts are ahead of time. It doesn't factor nicely, is what I'm telling you. So I told you the two x-intercepts this function has. You can find the y-intercept really easy. In fact, you don't need any calculus. You can just look at it and find the y-intercept. All right, we're going to go from 1 to 8. What's the domain? All real numbers, no division, no square roots, all real numbers. This function has no symmetry. It's got an even and an odd power. You can check that really easily. Just take negative x and f it. Negative x to the fourth minus 4 negative x cubed plus 10. So we get x to the fourth. There's three negatives and another negative, which is four negatives is positive. So this is not f of x or negative f of x. So there is no symmetry here. So it's not f of x, and it's not equal to negative f of x. So we got no symmetry here. Number two, asymptotes. All right, any vertical asymptotes? Nope, polynomials have no vertical asymptotes, so there's no division by zero. Every function has n behavior. <coughs> now, some functions have horizontal asymptote as their n behavior. Some functions increase or decrease <laughs> to positive or negative infinity. So we have to decide what is happening here. So n behavior, you need limit. X approaches, we'll do positive infinity first. So physicist method tells us which term is the only one that matters when we're going towards infinity. X to the fourth power. So I don't care about that minus or plus the other stuff. So only because we're going to infinity can I throw out the other terms. So 
we get infinity to the fourth power, which is infinity, positive infinity. So we're doing something very similar for negative infinity. And when x is a huge negative value, I can throw out smaller power terms. So I just keep my x to the fourth term. Now it's a little bit tricky. Negative infinity to the fourth power. Infinity. So it's an even power, so it's positive infinity. So for n behavior, I need to see a limit at plus infinity and a limit at minus infinity. It won't necessarily always be the same. So you can draw this out with a cloud. So we said either way, you're going up to infinity on both sides. So when I go to the right, I go to positive infinity. When I go to the left, I also go to positive infinity. All right, derivatives. So I want you to do three and four. Find both derivatives and classify critical points. Polynomials should be easy to get derivatives. Don't mess up with multiplication or subtracting one. Make sure you factor to solve for x.
questions on local min or the inflection point classification or on how I got the two x values. How did I get them? So I set f prime. So are you okay with the f prime of x? So I set it equal to zero and then I needed to factor. This is a polynomial. So I factored out 4x squared and I'm left with x minus 3. So x is 3 or 0. x is 0 is a repeat, a double root, a repeated root, but that's not too important right now. So if you were following along in pre-calculus 1, this is a repeated root, so it's going to be a bounce x-intercept. So if you remember crossing a bouncing x-intercepts, this is going to be a bounce x-intercept. If you didn't take my pre-calculus one class, don't worry. Just not necessarily terribly important. We'll fix it all with calculus. All right, and then we take those two x values, plug them in to the second derivative, and we got zero for the first, for the x value of zero, which meant inflection point. Not happy, not sad. And then the second one we got definitely positive. I don't care exactly what positive number you got. It was only whether it was greater than zero or less than zero. And that, we do 0, 10 on the first part? Uh, that was f of 0 was 10, so our y value was 10. And so we use that for our inflection point because it's equal to 0. So the fact that x was 0 was coincidental? No, on the inflection point, it's <coughs> I just use, as these are points. I'm just turning values into points. Oh, so 0, 10 is not the answer. That's what you use to put into. Okay. That's just. 0, 10 is the critical point right there. So yes. That is important to know. We're going to be graphing, and so we're going to need y values. We're going to need points, basically. So the x values that happened on were 0 and 3, but I'm going to turn it. It's going to be a graph, so I need to get points here. So we classified our critical points. Now we're going to do the next step, which is increasing, decreasing intervals. So generally you want to find one of them, and then the other one is going to be whatever's left over pretty much. So increasing one is f prime greater than zero. So what is f prime? It was four x cubed minus twelve x squared. So this is pre-calculus one problem. You can graph this function and figure out when is it positive, when is it above the x-axis. There's another way to do it. So I'm going to call this g of x. Well, actually, I already have a name. We, it's already f prime. So if we figure out where is it equal to 0, all we have to do is figure out in between when it's not 0 is a positive or negative. So we're going to do what's called a sine graph. So we're going to graph the basically is a positive or negative or 0. So 0 and 3 were the two x values that made it 0. And all we have to do is figure out positive or negative in between. So there's a few ways to do this. You can use end behavior and crossing and bouncing. That's one way to do it. Or the less exciting way is plugging in x values and figuring out if they're positive or negative. So you probably want to do the less exciting way. Plug in x values. So of the original. Well, we already have that. Okay. But that doesn't nest it impacts the end behavior here, but it's not necessarily the same end behavior. 
All right, so sine graph, what's a good value to pick to the left of zero, less than zero? Negative one. Oh, very good. So take negative one and f prime it. So plug it into f prime, what do you get? We get negative 16, but negative something. So the answer is we get negative. So over here we have negative. Yeah, yeah, it's a minus. So it should be negative again. But let's pretend that we don't know that. So we'll pick positive one and plug it in. So f prime of positive one, we get four minus 12, which again is less than zero. So negative all between zero and three. And what is a good number after three to pick? Four. All right, I'll go four. F prime of four, which is four to the fourth, minus 12 times four cubed. I think it's minus four times four squared. Yes, I was a little worried. <laughs> So we get 16 minus 12 is something, 4 or so, but positive times positive, greater than 0. So we got plus for the last interval. Now remember, this is the sine graph of the derivative. So this negative really means we have a negative slope. So our function is decreasing from negative infinity to 0, also decreasing from 0 to 3 and increasing from three to infinity. So we're gonna write that out. You can also do it just like that, the, like you would in pre -count one. Uh, I'm negative just gonna write plus. increasing from three to infinity and decreasing negative infinity to zero, union zero to three, like that. So number six, concavity. So we're gonna look at when is f double prime greater than zero. f double prime is a little bit nicer of a function. Somewhere. Two x. Twelve x squared minus twenty four x. So we did not figure out when this, well we figured out one time when this was zero, but we never explicitly set it equal to zero and figured out all the x values that make it zero. So let's go ahead and do that right now. In the critical point process, we found all the zeros of f prime. So we're gonna first find zeros. Any questions on 
that right there. <coughs> so a sine graph decides that plus or minus, plus or minus, plus or minus. I could go and choose negative 1, positive 1, and 3. That would be reasonable. Is this function hard to graph? 12x squared minus 24x. It's a happy parabola. What are the intercepts? These. So we already got the x-intercepts, and it's a happy parabola. So I'm going to sketch it out really quickly. Happy parabola. We already have the intercepts. So would you just find a local minimum of that one? And I could find a local minimum. Also, it would be the vertex in this case. Right. But that's not going to be terribly useful in, I just need to decide positive or negative. Oh, okay. You're not looking for an actual graph. I don't need to know everything about the function, just when is it greater than zero, when is it less than zero. So we got positive from negative infinity to zero, negative zero to two, positive two to infinity. So we're splitting it up just like this. So we got concave up in two places. We'll go that with that first. And we're concave down, zero to two. So we're concave up on the two positive intervals and concave down in between. Now, if you notice, I don't include any of the times where your derivative is zero or your second derivative is zero, because you're not increasing or decreasing if your derivative is zero, you're neither. You're not concave up or concave down when your second derivative is zero, you're neither. So we don't include when they equal zero. So all your intervals are going to be open, is what that means. All right, plot key points. So plot stuff. So we need a big graph. Let's go critical points first. How about that? 0, 10, and 3, negative 17. So that's 0, 10. Was it 3, negative 17? Hopefully, yeah, 3, negative 17. I'm going to intentionally make this not to scale. So 3 negative 17 was a local minimum. So I knew it was a local minimum, so I can start drawing what it looks like right around there. It's the smallest point around, so everything else is a little bit bigger. So it's going to look like a U or a smile. Uh, inflection points are a little strange. You have to know is was it increasing or decreasing to know which way, which of the two ways to write inflection points. So we can't just write the inflection point right away. Uh, end behavior, it's somewhere around here, up on both sides. So we're going to go up on both sides. So our end behavior is going to look something like up on the right and up on the left, like that. And I gave the x-intercepts for free. We got 1.6, uh-oh. One 1.6, I'll say is right about there. And 3.8 is right next to four. So we got our x-intercepts right there. How do I know that this will not be a bounce x-intercept? Why could the graph not look like this right here? This is parabola. Would be a local maximum? It would have been a local maximum. That would be another critical point. So I can tell right now that we're not going to get any of this weird bounce intercepts. 
because we would have been a local max or a local min, depending on which way we balance right there. So we need to graph, let's go, we'll go left to right. So we'll just start on the left side arbitrarily. You could start on the right side and go backwards, but I like starting on the left and going to the right because uh, that will, that's a natural way to graph. So we'll start from the left and go to the right. So are we increasing or decreasing to the left of zero? And we need to answer that. We're in the decreasing from negative infinity to zero. So we're decreasing. And are we concave up or down for, uh, from negative infinity to zero? So we're decreasing concave up. So how does that look? Now at 10, or I should say at this point right here, we are actually having a flat slope. So I need to go decreasing and concave up. So there's only one way to connect that, and it's going to look something like this. Decreasing concave up. So I'll write a comment, decreasing concave up. And CCU is going to be concave up for lazy people who don't want to write. So we're decreasing concave up. All right, what happens next when you pass 0? What happens just to the right of 0? I see concave down 0 to 2. So it's going to bend downwards. Now is it increasing or decreasing from 0 to the right? So we're decreasing concave down. And that'll happen until we get to the x value of 2. So here's x value 2. I'm going to go decreasing concave down. So the x-intercept is 1.6. However, it's concave down until 2. So it's still concave down until right about there. So I'm going to put a little mark right here. So in between those two marks, we're decreasing concave down. Oops, CCD. All right, from, let's see, two to three, we are decreasing concave up. If you scroll up, you'll see that, or flip back in your page, you'll see that. So we're decreasing. I know we're decreasing because we need to connect this together, but we're decreasing concave up. So decreasing. Do your best. It's supposed to turn slightly upwards. It's a little hard to see exactly how much concavity it has at different places. So just do your best to go concave upwards right there. But if we were to, like, instead of drawing lines, even just write what it's doing, if your graph was horrible and you had comments on it, I'd probably would give you a point or two for knowing what was happening, even if you couldn't make it draw it like that. Okay. All right, so from three onwards, hopefully it's doing the same thing. So we're going to go concave up past three, and we better be increasing also. Increasing concave up. So that's pretty easy to draw. And it's going to get super, super steep like that. So it's going to miss the, the reason I couldn't draw it over to here, that would be concave down for a little while. So I have to come back and erase that end behavior. So that was increasing concave up.